What's going on everybody? I hope you all are well out there. So for those of you who are new here, my name is Jaren. I'm a voice teacher, speech trainer, and the founder and owner of this amazing studio, the Jaren Elmiger Studio. I know I'm late with this one too. I'm years late with this one too, but that's okay. Better now than never, right? And you all have asked for this video time and time again. I promise you I'm getting to these requests and stuff like that. I'm a one man show right now for the most part. So I gotta do what I can, okay? But I'm getting to these requests. I promise you I'll write them down. I promise you I'll write them down. But but anyway, let's cut to the chase of what we came here to do. Here is the wonderful Callie Day singing Hear My Prayer. has such a perfect velocity or speed or or movement in vibrato there is an upswing and a downswing here's the pitch there is an upswing and a downswing to vibrato so people's vibratos are different speeds their upswing and downswing or the wavelength of their vibrato if you will whatever you want to call it it can go wider more shorter you know slower faster whatever the case may be she just has such a billowy kind of like a cloud i always think of like a cloud or like bouncing off of you know something soft like a big old pillow when i hear her voice there is such a billowiness about her vibrato that it's just so clean and it's always consistent it's always consistent <laughs> Has nailed down the head voice thin folds upper register Just to know. so she really is opening up these molars right here to know. so she's really elongating these vowels right here and kind of keeping it more of like a classical shape if you will a kind of like an operatic a classical shape she's really dropping the jaw I always tell people to get the molars apart not literally but just in a figurative sense to So it really gets that lofty sound that you want, but it also helps the acoustics of the high pitches travel easier because you're opening up the vocal tract. You're making everything kind of wider and bigger, which is needed for higher pitches shoving through our cylinder, which is this for us, our vocal tract, our throat, our mouth, all of that stuff has to be open and wide for these kind of notes to travel through efficiently. <laughs> The glow of glory. Glow! She really opened up. Glory! And she kind of really came back down and really closed it up and got more lush as she came back down. I didn't do the run exactly like her, but you know what I'm saying? She kind of. She really came back down and came back into that E vowel or the E phoneme of glory right there. And She sung to the end consonant of done. Done. The end sound or phoneme, the n sound is a voice consonant. You can sing through that. Done. Done with C. Not done with sin. Done with C. So she really opened up and spread that sin vowel, the N, almost like a smile. Sin, sung through the teeth. Sin. Mercy, mercy, mercy. So she had a little bit more of like a neutral position of my with a minimal R sound. Then C had more of that open throat, the false vocal fold retracted, yawn feeling C right there. Stop 
here so I can hear the rest of the audience. <laughs> I love how she shifts into that low, big chest. Amen. Oh, so what she does is she really drops the larynx a little bit. She really uses that body for support. You can see her doing that throughout the entire thing, how she kind of moves her body and keeps that torso kind of engaged. But here she lets go. She doesn't push it, but she lets it resonate. Amen. Oh, and she puts that aspirate H in front of her, the aspirate onset. Amen. Oh, Not amen. Oh, amen. Oh, Almost like H-A-M-E-N. Humming, and she really drops that larynx, and she really anchors down and lets it be open. Humming. So she really came from a ah oh, to a uh. So the ah oh, was kind of more open and robust. And then she went more to like a tilted mid with the jaw a little bit. And maybe a tilted cry cord or thyroid maybe. Oh, man. Still in chest voice, still thick right there. But she's really bringing that chest voice up a little bit and changing the resonance or changing the vocal track shape to make different sounds come out. And since we paused, I want to shout out this accompanist. She is killing it. Okay, she's killing it. So shout outs to her. an intentional switch she did right there. If you want fluidity in your registers or in your, you know, different parts of your range, a big thing to consider is intentional switching. That's one thing that'll help you stay free instead of getting in that purgatory range that I call it, where it's like, I don't know where I want to switch or I want to go. So I'm just going to kind of, uh, uh, kind of be right there. If I know at a certain note or a certain point I want to switch, I'm going to do that intentionally. So then it makes me feel more free. She did that right there. Uh, So she kind of switched from that robust, kind of thicker, cricoidy sound to a more lighter, thinner, headier, maybe a little bit breathier sound. <laughs> Switches down. Whatever it was, that pattern that she did coming down, that is such a nice, easy turnaround pattern. It is definitely a pattern. It's definitely a motif that she uses as she comes down and walks down on that little part right there. If you enjoyed this analysis, click subscribe down below to click the alert button next week so you know when the next video is posted. And as I will always say to you, be vocally bold, creative, and aware, but most of all, be vocally you. All right, y'all. See y'all soon.